Hello, Music Theory 1. This is video number 23. Today we are going to be talking about figured bass. All about figured bass notation. What is it? How do we read it? How do we use it? Let's jump right in. Figured bass is a system of shorthand. It's a way of notating harmony. In some ways, figured bass is an analog to lead sheet symbols, which is another shorthand way of indicating chords that are supposed to be performed. Figured bass is a bit older. Uh, figured bass we see a lot in music from the 18th and 19th centuries. And uh, figured bass consists of two parts. One part is the bass part. It's a, just a bass line, a notated bass line written out the way we'd expect to see it. And that bass line is usually read by somebody on a keyboard or perhaps on a low string instrument. And then what are called the figures. The figures are written below the bass line, and they tell a musician what chord goes above each bass note. Okay, so figured bass, some, it's a shorthand system of notating harmony, and figured bass has two parts. It has a bass line, which is written out, and then a set of figures that go beneath the bass line to tell you what chords go with the bass note. Here is a nice short example of what uh, some figured bass might look like. Some figured bass in E minor, we have a bass line written out in our bass clef staff, and then we have a bunch of figures below. Now what do these figures tell us? Well, some of them are numbers, and the numbers indi indicate an interval above the bass note. But the numbers are abbreviated, and we're going to be using similar numbers to the ones we've been using uh, to, to signify inversions on Roman numerals. We might remember the term base position symbols that our textbook liked, and we're going to be using the same ones. And so a quick reminder on how those are going to work, we remember that just like with our Roman numerals, if we have no numbers, that indicates a triad in root position. If we have the number six, we're indicating a first inversion triad, triad that has a pitch a sixth above the bass note. It also has a pitch a third above the bass note, but lazy musicians don't write it out. And 6-4 will indicate second inversion triads, triads which have a pitch a sixth above the bass note and a fourth above the bass note. All of these numbers indicate the intervals above the bass. We can see accidentals, and they'll be applied to whatever number that they uh, are next to, applied to the pitch that is that interval above the bass. And if we have an accidental without any number, then it's going to apply to the pitch a third above the bass. Okay? So most of this works in a way very similar to what we're used to with, trot, with Roman numerals. We just got a couple of wrinkles here with the accidentals. We can translate our figured base into Roman numerals. We'll be doing that quite a bit when we look at a figured base. And so we can start by looking at this one. Our first note in the base, E, has no figures underneath it. That means it's a root position triad. And in our key of E minor, we're going to harmonize that with the tonic triad. When we look at the next beat in F sharp, we see some figures beneath. First, we see a six. 6 tells us that we have a first inversion triad, and so if F sharp is the root of that chord, then we're going to have some sort of D chord, we're going to have some sort of 7 chord. But not just that, we have a sharp on the 6. The sharp tells us that we need to add a sharp to the pitch a sixth above the bass. Okay, so our bass note is F sharp. All right, I'm going to cut myself up. F sharp, G, A, B, C, D. That means we're going to need to sharp the D. Okay, we're going to have a chord with D sharp, F sharp, and A. And that, in the key of E minor, is our 7 diminished 6 chord. That's right, we needed that sharp to raise the leading tone for our 7 diminished 6 chord. Right now, almost all the accidentals we see in our figured basses will be for the leading tone in minor. It's going to be the most common one we see this semester, but going forward, we're going to, when we, as we introduce more chromatic chords in future semesters, we'll see more accidentals in our figures. Let's keep going. We see a 6 on the next chord. What, what does that mean? First inversion. And so if G is the third of our chord, I can count down a third and figure out the root, which is E. This is an E chord in first inversion. That means... 1, 6. Very simple. Next, we have another chord with no figures. When we see no figures beneath, that means a root position triad. And so if A is the root of this chord, it's going to be 
our four chord, minor four in the minor key. Finally, we see a big six four on that B. The six four there tells us we have a triad and second inversion with B as the fifth. And so if B is the fifth of our chord, I need to figure out what the root is going to be. B, that would be E, a fifth down, an E chord. Once again, a tonic triad here in 6-4 position. This is going to be our 1-6-4 chord. There it is, 1-6-4, and we have a seventh chord to wrap up, that number seven telling us that we have a root position seventh chord, and we have a sharp floating beneath it. Whenever we see those accidentals without any number, whenever we see that, it's going to apply to the third of the chord. Again, lazy musicians can't even be bothered to write out three. So this is what we would see more typically. That means we've got a B7 chord with a D sharp in it. B, D sharp, F sharp, A. This is our 5-7 chord. And of course, we need that accidental to raise the leading tone in minor, something that we are always trying to be more conscious of. And that is indeed our cadential 6-4, by the way, 1-6-4, resolving to 5-7 here. And we finish on the tonic triad. Here are all the Roman numerals implied by our figured base, okay? We looked at the figures. They told us what chords we would need above the given base note. The figures helped us figure out what accidentals we need, helped us figure out what intervals above the base we are looking for, and we translated that into Roman numerals. At this point, we would be ready to create a realization of the figured base. We would be re ready to take this from just an abbreviation and to turn it into some actual music. This is a full realization of a figure that figured base we looked at. This is one version. There are obviously many ways we could realize those particular chords, many different voicings we could use, many different ways, but this is one way using good voice leading, using the notes that have been applied by that figured bass, and uh, this is what a performer might play if they saw that figured bass. Let's take a listen to a re this realization that I wrote for us. Yeah, that was really fast. Okay, a couple of little details, and then uh, we'll be wrapping it up. One thing I want to point out is the nota different notations in terms of raising a note. In the figuration I just showed you, I used a sharp sign, and that's a really common one. But this was, again, like lead sheet symbols, something that was used very often by practical musicians, and so there exist multiple ways that we could have that sharp. You might see a sharp six, that would indicate to raise the pitch a sixth above the note in the bass. But it's also common to see a plus sign, right? That would tell us the same thing. We want to raise the note a sixth above the bass by a half step. Another thing we might see is this slash, right? This slash would tell us also to raise the note a sixth above the bass by a half step. All of these are different variants of a similar thing. They're all telling us to raise a particular pitch. And so if we see them in our figured bass, we don't want to freak out. Just different ways to say the same thing. Again, uh, this is a system that you know, somebody didn't write the book of figured bass notation and then everybody all used it. It's a system that arose from musicians and so there came different solutions to the same needs of, uh, of the system. So different ways to raise a note. Don't worry too much about it. And just as a reminder, figured bass for seventh chords, we are not going to be doing a lot of part writing with seventh chords this semester, but in case you need it for later, uh, or just to point it out to you, we remember seven indicates a root position triad, six five indicates a first inversion triad, four three a second inversion triad, and four two a third inversion triad, okay? Just a refresher on the different bass position symbols for seventh chords. Again, we're going to be focusing on writing with triads and working with those, so these probably aren't going to be coming up in the last couple weeks of the semester, but down the line you will see them 100% and you want to be ready for that. That's it, guys. That's figured base. Figured base, a system of notation, a system of shorthand to abbreviate writing out chords. If you've learned anything in Theory 1, it's that musicians are lazy and hate writing things out and will do whatever they can to try to shorthand it. This is another system. It uses a bass line, uses these different figures below to indicate the chords above. Okay, we are, will be doing figured bass. We will be realizing figured bass. It's going to become a big part of our part writing exercises. We're going to be using these figured bass notations, and so we want to be familiar with it. 
draws on a lot of things we already know from our knowledge of Roman numerals, and so that's going to be helpful. Please bring your questions to class next time and come ready to do some figured base. Until then, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.